although, to be honest, I'm probably not the first person they want to hear advice from on how to win. <laughs> but I'm glad it is essential to ensure the safety and security of the British people. Uh, with her and the relevant minister as soon as that can be arranged. Yeah. Now come to the Leader of the Opposition, Rishi yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join with the Prime Minister in expressing my shock at the attack on a British soldier? Our thoughts are with him and his family as we wish him a speedy recovery. And I also join with the Prime Minister in his warm words about our Olympic athletes. Yeah. I have no doubt that after years of training, focus and dedication, they will bring back many gold medals. Although, to be honest, I'm probably not the first person they want to hear advice from on how to win. <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad in our exchanges. I'm glad, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad in our exchanges so far we have maintained a cross party consensus on important matters of foreign policy. And in that spirit today, I wanted to focus our exchange on Ukraine and national security. The UK has consistently been the first country to provide new capabilities to Ukraine, such as the long-range weapons that have been used so effectively in the Black Sea. Now, those decisions aren't easy, and I was grateful to the Prime Minister for his support as I made those decisions in government. And in opposition, I offer that same support to him. So can I ask that he continues to be responsive to Ukraine's new requests so that they don't just stand still, but can decisively win out against Russian aggression. Can I thank the Leader of the Opposition for not only raising the question of Ukraine, but doing it in a way which can maintain the unity across this House, which has been so important uh, to the Ukrainian people. And I can assure him that we are, of course, talking to Ukraine about um, how they deal with the Russian aggression that they are facing, have been facing for many, many months. And I will continue to try to do that in the way that he did, which is to reach out across the House to share such information as we can to maintain the unity that is so important. I thank him for that response. Now, I also found that one of the UK's key roles as Ukraine's closest ally is to encourage other countries to follow our lead in providing new military capabilities. And in that vein, when he saw Chancellor Schultz recently, I'm sure he thanked him for the considerable air defence that the Germans are providing the Ukrainians. But did he also raise with him the issue of the Germans perhaps providing long-range missiles, just as the UK, America and France have now done? I had the opportunity in Washington at the NATO Council to talk to our German counterparts. There was a strong theme there on Ukraine, uh, discussed with all of our allies, and part of my message was to urge all of our allies to provide further support where they can to the Ukrainian people, and that was well received, and there was unity coming out of the NATO Council. That's what we are, must all do. I'm glad to hear the Prime Minister raise the NATO summit as well, because I very much welcome the message that came out loud and clear from that summit, and indeed the Prime Minister's words from the dispatch box on Monday, about Ukraine's irreversible path to NATO membership. And so does he agree with me that fatuous Russian claims on Ukrainian territory must not act as a block to Ukraine joining the NATO Defensive Alliance? I wholeheartedly agree, and it is for NATO allies to decide who is a member of NATO. Formed 75 years ago, a proud and probably most successful alliance that's ever been formed, and that's why it was really important at the summit that we were able to say there is now this irreversible path to membership. That's a step forward from a year ago, and President Zelensky was very pleased that we have been able to make that successful uh, transition. The opposition. Thanks to the complex legal and diplomatic work that the UK has led over the past several months, together with our allies Canada and America, the Prime Minister will, I hope, now find that there is a sound and established legal basis to go further on sanctions and seize Russian assets and use them to fund Ukrainian reconstruction. Now, that work has taken time, but I hope he is able to take a look at it. And can he confirm for the House that this work is something that he will take forward? Because if he does, I can assure him that the opposition will support him in doing so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Again, I'm grateful for this opportunity to say how united we were on the question of sanctions um, across this House. The use now made of the, what has been seized and frozen is an important issue on which I think we can move forward. And I know the Chancellor is already beginning to have some discussions about how we can take more effective measures. Again, um, I will seek to reach out across the House uh, as we do this important work together. Yeah. 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 I very much welcome the Prime Minister's response, uh, but I also uh, welcome both his and the Defence Secretary's recent emphasis on the importance of the Tempest fighter jet programme. It's a crucial sovereign capability, as he mentioned, and important for our alliances with Italy and Japan. Furthermore, however, other countries also wish to participate, and in government we had begun initial productive discussions with our friend and ally Saudi Arabia about their desire to potentially join the programme. So could the Prime Minister confirm that he will continue those initial positive conversations with Saudi Arabia, and again, I can assure him that he will have our support in doing so. Well, let me make this absolutely clear. This is a really important programme. Significant progress has already been made, and we want to build on that progress. And I've had some initial discussions, uh, not least in Farnborough, where I was just a few days ago. Leader of the Opposition. Oh, finally, Mr Speaker, can I just say that in the dangerous and uncertain world that we now sadly live in, I know firsthand how important it is that our Prime Minister can use his prerogative power to quickly respond militarily to protect British national security, sometimes without giving this House prior notice. Now, these are perhaps the most difficult decisions that a Prime Minister can take, and I welcomed his support when I made them. And I want to take this opportunity to assure him of the opposition's support if he deems it necessary to take similar action in the future. So does he agree with me that whilst the use of the prerogative power is sometimes politically controversial, it is essential to ensure the safety and security of the British people. I agree it's essential, and um, our security is the first duty of government. Uh, I was grateful to the Leader of the Opposition for reaching out when action had to be taken to me personally to ensure that I was briefed on the sensitive issues that lay behind the decisions that he had to take. Uh, and as I mentioned to him last week, I will endeavour to ensure that we proceed in the same way so that he has access to all the information that he needs to come to a determination, which I hope will be, to be able to support the position that this government takes. Thank you. Kim Ledbeach. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and welcome back. Can I congratulate the Prime Minister on such a positive start to his Premiership? 